Pathways to Economic Development, Strategies for Economic Development. This is a reading by Amitava uh, Dutta. In this, he has discussed several debates that what should be the pathway of the LDC? Least developed countries should take up which pathway for economic development? And there are merits and demerits attached to any kind of pathway you want to take up. And what is the experience of LDCs, particularly India, in each of these pathways? This is what has been discussed in this essay. So the kind of the question which might come in the paper in case if they're going to ask is that what are the different strategies for economic development? Uh, discuss merits and demerits of both with the focus on India. So you will have to give the merits and demerits of all of these uh, strategies. And uh, in all of these strategies, I guess he, he has discussed that you do not have to take up a stand. There is a middle ground in between each of them. So one debate is that between state versus market. So economic development should be driven by state or it should be uh, it should be driven by by free markets who should take the responsibility this is what this this particular point is talking about so after world war 2 state became the driving force for development so we have already seen before world war 2 there was uh, depression which also came uh, classical economics failed. Uh, there was huge unemployment. So government intervention became very necessary in the economic sphere also. So state there became a huge driving force for economic development after World War II. So nobody could deny the role of state. It could be that in some countries, maybe the role of state is uh, is more as compared to the other countries, but still there is a role of state in economic sphere in almost all the countries. And then there was the shift from state controlled to the new liberal policies which also happened. So people slowly realized those countries which, uh, which, which had huge state control in economic sphere, they also realized that excess of anything is wrong. And the excesses of government intervention in economic sphere, it led to corruption. It led to inefficiencies. So neoliberal policies, they came. The room for market, free market was, uh, uh, was opened up. Even in India, this happened. Although liberalization happened quite late in India, but still it happened. So there was a, there was a shift from state-controlled economy to liberalization, to free markets. But free market also doesn't mean just free market. There is no government intervention. There is government intervention there also. So those people who say that free markets should be there, they base their argument on the basis of that, yes, there will be efficient allocation of resources. Free markets will do that. Productive efficiency would be there. Private individuals, the information which they have, free markets can use that information better than in case if there is a state control. Also, there are various problems with the state regulations, which you know. It can lead to corruption, it can lead to inefficiency, it can lead to various other problems also. And you may not reach to the optimal solution. So those people who believe in free markets, they base their opinion for free markets on the basis of these arguments. People who believe for state intervention, they say, you look at LDCs, you take all the assumptions of first welfare theorem, they can be applied here. They're not likely to hold. There is information asymmetry in LDCs. Uh, there are state control monopolies. Not only state control, there are monopolies also. So 
in case if you have monopolies in case if you have public goods in case if you have information asymmetry the conditions of first welfare theorem is not going to hold so you should have state intervention and because future is uncertain which is always going to be if you leave everything to the free markets they are not going to take care of the problems which might arise in case if there is unemployment free market will not do anything they will say, I am going to uh, reduce wages. But what will happen to the people? You keep on reducing their wages, how will they live? And free market, in case if um, firms are going to get lesser profits, they are going to lay off people. What will happen to the economy in case if there is unemployment? So state intervention could actually solve that problem. State intervention can be in terms of giving unemployment benefits. State intervention can be in terms of increasing government expenditure and giving employment to people in case of free markets are not able to give. So they say that why not state intervention? And state government will have better information about the macro issues in the economy. You and I, private individuals or private entrepreneurs, firms, do we really care about the macro issues we don't. We are only driven by our profit maximization. right? But in order to run the country, it is better in case if there is state intervention. So that is a case for state intervention. Now, there are examples on both the sides. There are examples for free markets also. In case of free markets, you can see um, there is uh, the success of capitalist economies of Western Europe, of US. Uh, and uh, these people who believe in free markets, they say, just see, Soviet Union uh, broke up. Uh, so there is a demise of Soviet Union. And this country was, uh, was against capitalism, was for state intervention. So demise of USSR and the success of capitalist countries, they are the examples of the empirical success of free markets. Then on the other hand, you have empirical success of government support also. Those economies which have developed on the basis of government. Uh, government has supported many times, even in the capitalist countries, in Western Europe, in US, in Germany, it is not that everything is just given to the free markets to solve. Uh, you look at the empirical case in LDCs. So on the one hand, you have free market. On the other hand, you have state intervention. So in the countries like newly industrialized countries like uh, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, there's a huge role of the free market in their successes. But later on, it was realized it's not just, just the free market. There is a state role also. Government was also helping them. And you look at the recent successes of India and China also. You will realize this. It is not that India and China has succeeded just on the basis of free markets. No. Government has supported them. Wherever it, wherever it was necessary. And state intervention, case for state intervention is, why do you need state intervention? Just look at the poor performance of India and China. You can't leave everything to free markets. You have to allow for state intervention. So you're looking at the debate, how debate is moving. So on the one hand, he's giving you all the cases of free markets. On the other hand, he's saying just free market is not enough. You need to have state support also for that. And he concluded this essay by saying that it is not that the markets and states, they are substitutes of each other. They are not. They are going to help each other. Right. Markets also have many shortcomings, which state is going to uh, improve. Market is not going to worry about unemployment. Market is not going to worry about prices. They are just driven by the profit maximization. So those things could be taken off, taken care of by state. State also has problems in terms of inefficiency, in terms of corruption, because in case if everything is government control, then 
there is uh, the problem of uh, corruption there is a problem of inefficiency which market can solve so you need to have some middle path huh? you can't have both uh, you can't have either just state uh, driven economy or just market driven economy you can't have that this is the first part of the reading in second part of the reading he has talked about the debate between autarky versus openness so one of the development path which the which the ldc can take up is is the state intervention or free market so he said this middle path in case of autarky and openness also so autarky means inward looking self reliant uh, openness is outward looking export promotion here also he says that you need to have a middle path you can't have just either of them so he says this is that after world war 2 it was a state led industrialization in most of the countries import substitution strategy was there and most of the ldcs uh, they were uh, very recently they got independence and they had this colonial hangover they remember the colonial pattern of trade colonial pattern of trade they said this if you are going to leave everything to the market we can be um uh, driven again by that colonial pattern of trade how we are just going because we are already small uh, small economies dependent upon agriculture we will be only exporting agricultural goods that will act as a raw material for the factories in the developed countries so there was a colonial hangover so they were very wary of leaving everything to the market they said this we need to have a plan through which economy should move ahead growth should be the way as we envision in case if we are going to be driven only by markets or what free markets want we may not be able to achieve what we have a vision for our economy that could be possible only with the state intervention but ldc is also realized that uh, um, just increasing uh, the exports of the primary products in which they have the comparative advantage or the simple manufactured goods that is very limited that is not going to bring much foreign exchange in the economy so you need to have the outward looking policies also you need to have the policies through which you're going to export your products you should be also developing new products not just primary products not just simple manufactured products products which can bring huge foreign exchange into your economy right so again all of these outward looking policies do you think just because uh, markets wanted they they happened on their own no state intervention was required for that right uh, through the free market approach i mean state intervention was required instead of just uh, just uh, uh, basing their uh, opinion only on the free market state intervention was also required you can't have export promotion without active help by the state then the question which arises a uh, question which arose was um, how to develop the manufacturing industry because they realized this you can't be just dependent upon primary products you will have to be exporting the manufactured goods also right so and why because this is going to foster technological change this manufacturing industry in case of that is going to be developed then this is going to foster technological change you have to move away from primary production uh, and they realized they re so they are developing manufactured goods for their own for inward that's an inward looking policy right and they also know the problems which are caused by the deterioration of terms of trade if they are just going to produce the agricultural goods uh, so they can be deterioration of terms of trade they can be dangers of fdi mm. because um, there is a huge profit repatriation which might occur in case of there is huge fdi which is going to come into your economy uh, then on the other side why they were interested in export promotion because they realized this that in case if export promotion is going to be promoted if exports are going to be promoted then it is this will increase demand for the domestic goods not only by a domestic consumers but also by people who are living abroad right 
So this is going to bring foreign exchange into your economy. Competition is going to increase. You will produce things which in which you have comparative advantage. Right? This is going to increase competition, which is good for you. Your quality will improve and exports will improve. If you look at Indian case, you'll realize that uh, in the early days of independence, we had highly protectionist policy, self-reliance. So we were too inward looking. But then in 1960s, there was some steps which were taken for export promotion also. But then suddenly in 70s, there was again, uh, government became very restrictive towards transnational corporations. There was a wave of nationalism which was there. In 1980s, there was some piecemeal liberalization efforts which started. Although trade liberalization, it gathered momentum in 1990s after, uh, uh, after reforms, 1991 reforms. And international capital flows were liberalized in the second part of 90s, right? So still we have the partial capital account convertibility only. So the main point was, of the debate was, you do not have to use just inward looking or just outward looking. You have to use the middle part. You have to have a judicious combination of the two. You look at successful LDCs also. So don't think that these successful LDCs have gone out all for outward looking policy. No. Right. They gave protection to their uh, nascent industries. Those industries were relatively low technological, uh, low technology industries. Uh, these low technology industries were giving some breathing space so that they can develop. Once they have developed enough, then the doors were open for the foreign competition also. After which, I mean, of course, when the foreign competition started, then it was the outward looking policy. So. Again, the judicious use of inward looking and the outward looking policy. This was the point. You with me? Uh, so these are the first two parts of the reading. So again, uh, so these are the different, uh, different debates about how uh, or what what uh, development strategy government should take. Right? Okay. I hope this was useful to you. You have to read the reading to make note. This is to give you an idea how what are the important points along the reading? So once you have uh, heard this recording, maybe it is easier for you to read the reading, right? And you can expand on the points which I have just